Welcome, this is a recorded session of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Conference of the PKI Consortium. This conference would not have been possible without our sponsors in Trust, HID Global, and PQ Shield, and the organizational support of the Post-Quantum Cryptography Working Group of the PKI Consortium, in particular in Trust, Logius, TNO, and CWI. And now uh, let me welcome Jaime Gomez Garcia. Every time I try, I never quite get it right. Um, he's a expert in telecoms, blockchain, quantum technologies, uh, and has spent a long and extensive career primarily in financial services. Um, his contributions as a disseminator uh, of quantum technologies and their influence on enterprises, uh, particularly in the financial domain. I mean, he's garnered a bit of a reputation on LinkedIn as a LinkedIn quantum top voice in 2022 and 23. He came second to Beyonce and Taylor Swift. Um, currently, uh, Jaime is head of quantum technologies at Banque Santander, addressing how quantum computing can be leveraged to benefit business and how to tackle quantum threat. And I know his presentation today will be uh, fantastic. So over to Jaime. Thank you very much, uh, Robert. And hopefully I'll, I'll do an excellent presentation. <laughs> You'll tell me later. Um, so thank you very much for being th here. Thank you very much, for Robert, for inviting me. Thank you very much to the audience that, that uh, is out there in, in the ether. Um, we started in Santander. Um, studying quantum technologies back in 2019. And, and, and so to, as of today, I coordinate initiatives both to understand how we, we can leverage that in the quantum, in, in the business areas, as well as what, what is the impact to cybersecurity. Um, we created internally the quantum uh, threat group in, in with, 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 with my colleagues in cybersecurity research, Dan Cadver, Mark Carney, with support of Jose Palacio, and also with the support of my boss, Cote de Monteverde. I work at the Crypto and Blockchain Center of Excellence. We, we created that initiative, and back in 2022, we defined um, our quantum threat program, which is our activities that are roadmap to, to address the threat that we are discussing here today. So um, when I talk to people in the industry, I get many people with, uh, by the way, if, if you want to get my contact, just uh, get in touch with me, feel free to get in touch with, with me over email or, or on LinkedIn. So basically, uh, our intention, as, as um, Anita and, and Bill were mentioning before about collaboration, is to is to collaborate, to explain what we have learned in, in our path. And basically, we want to help any of you who might be professionals in different organizations thinking, hey, I want to create my quantum readiness program, my quantum threat program, whatever you call it. But you may be willing how to start or what are the steps. So here we are to share our experience. So I will go very fast through some bibliography. M much of it has been already explained before, but I want to get in the end to some of the lessons that we learned and, the and, 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 and details on our, on our journey. So obviously, one of the first, thing, first places you need to look at are at Dustin, Bill, and their colleagues at NIST, because they are doing a great effort. And basically, this is the main source. Uh, the the post-quantum cryptography forum um, in Google that that Bill and Dustin are Dustin are, is, is coordinating and that Bill mentioned before is very interesting also to learn from 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 real practitioners in cryptography. Uh, obviously, you also need to watch out for the different cybersecurity agencies. We've had some of them today, um, some of them obviously different US ones. ANSI from France, we saw them, the UK ones. Etsy is making very good documents. Etsy, for those who don't know them, are the equivalent of NIST in, in, in Europe. And, and if, if you want to, to start understanding what this is all about, 
I would recommend you this document from BSI. This document provides a very good background on anything you need to know about quantum, the quantum thread and, and, and post-quantum cryptography and QKD and everything. So if, if you're not knowledgeable, read this. And, and if you want to get if you think you are ready to get hands-on in deploying a quantum threat program or a quantum readiness program, maybe the best source is the, this work from the um, quantum readiness work group of the CFDIR in Canada. This, this work is led by Dr. Michele Mosca, you know, an, an institution uh, that we should worship. Um, and when, when I say you must read this, it doesn't mean that you should not read everything, anything else, but, but these are the main sources and all of, all of the others are going to complement them. And, and I will go into that a little bit later. So um, I don't know how, uh, how I get the, the laser here. Anyway, um, in this document, you're going to find a, a, a proposal for a for a quantum readiness program, they divided this in, in two stages with six phases, preparation, discovery, risk assessment, risk mitigation, migration to new quantum safe cryptography and validation. But most importantly, this document also has a very good annexes and appendices providing you with questions you can ask your, your vendors to understand the roadmaps and this kind of assessment is is, is very valuable. You're not going to be able to transition if you do not understand what your providers are going to do or how they are going to help you in transitioning. And, and, and also the annexes up there, they are very good uh, examples and templates like this one that are going to help you frame how you are using cryptography in your organization today so that you do not miss anything. So it's full of examples and full of done exercises that you can that you can look and, and work on them to, uh, to start doing your own. Um, the World Economic Forum created also very two, mm, white, very two nice white papers, two very nice white papers. Um, I am proud that my colleagues Dan Cuthbert and Mark Carney have been collaborators of both of them. And by the way, I advise that they are going to be making in Black, Hand, in Black Hat in London in December a very nice talk on some of the work that we are doing. If you can be in Black Hat, I seriously recommend that you watch what they have in hand. Um, so in this, in this paper, the World Economic Forum um, suggests that you do a, a four-stage program, def define, identify, plan, and execute with a lot of focus on engagement of your organization. And if you're in the financial in the finance sector, um, the FSI SAC Post Quantum Cryptography Workgroup, which by the way is meeting tomorrow here in Amsterdam. So thank you everybody for coordinating, getting all of us together in the same town, the same days. Um, they the FSI SAC has created these these five five documents also with different guidelines and and feedback from many banks around the world. Um, and as well, they also provide um, an, an idea of a roadmap in six phases that come to talk about discovery, assessment, modeling, and remediation. But yeah, there's many different uh, recommendations and they are not all exactly the same. I think we need still to mature a little bit to come down to some higher level consensus. Consensus. I agree with what Anita said. So it, it is better that we work in different places, uh, and then we we later coordinate rather than waiting for everybody to get on the same page uh, at any point in time, because otherwise we would not achieve it. So uh, what did we do? So when we started back in 2022, the documents that we had available were not as many as as, as there are today, but we had. This, this one's here and, and, and a few more, but these were, were the main sources that we used to define our roadmap. Um, so we took all, all these and I've included here FSI, the FSI SAC1, which was not available at the moment. Uh, and, and we thought, hey, what are they saying? And we 
match, we, we, we grouped with colors and those different faces that, that the recommendations had more or less talking about the same things. And we came out to see that, in fact, we just needed five colors. Um, for those I didn't mention, the CSI is the Cloud Security Alliance, Etsy, Department of Homeland Security from the USA, World Economic Forum, it's the FDIR, a previous version of the document that I explained before, um, because that one is from SAMA, and, and the FSISAC one. So, with, with the, and, and another thing is that if you see, even though everybody agrees that awareness is important, only two of them put it as, as a specific phase. And with regards to the question before on whether we are not starting too early to generate awareness, I think we are too late in generating awareness. Because awareness is something that we have to do constantly. And in, I, I did not put here our timeline, but awareness is throughout all these years in our timeline. It's the longest activity that we're going to have. And that's it, by the way, that, it, that is what I'm doing here today as well. So, so once we had a rough idea of what we wanted to do, we defined our main goals. You can define your own, but I guess probably everybody would agree with these goals here to make your organization a quantum safe enterprise and to do that smooth, smooth and efficiently and to change the way cryptography has been unmanaged so far. So we need to start managing cryptography instead of having it, yeah, don't bother me, it works. Um, and basically this is the summary of, of our quantum threat program. Five phases, education and awareness, where we try that our organization at all levels is understanding what we are trying to do, why we are trying to do, and, and, what, and, and what the program is about. And, and Obviously, you're going to need engagement. But to gain engagement, you need to do awareness before. So there is no engagement without, without awareness. And we can talk about any other thing, but the most important thing today is that you gain engagement. All the rest, discovery, etc., forget about it. No engagement, you will not discover anything. So you need to engage your organization. You need to engage your leadership. So forget about anything else. You need to generate awareness to get engagement. So then we got the program definition, which kind of sets up the high level overview of, hey, what we are trying to, what are we trying to do? And, and some governance, etc. Then you enter into discovery. It is not only, hi Bill, I thought you were going to miss this. <laughs> um, so about discovery, it is not only to discover the cryptography that you use, but also that you develop or um, identify the tools that you're going to need um, and, and think about gaining automation. So you do not need to think only about the tools. You also need to think about the data models that you're going to use so that you can exploit them later on. Um, then once you know all that, you need to start planning, and pl plan planning means uh, establishing priorities based on risk assessments, and also defining, mm, testing how you're gonna implement your transition and making technical guidelines so that the operations teams can act on them um, in, in, in an efficient way, because you do not, you, you cannot expect that your operations teams are all PhDs in cryptography, so you need to create very detailed guidelines for them to be able to transition. And once you launch, you have all those plans, you can launch an execution plan, you will track those, you, the success and uh, feedback any lessons learned to update your knowledge, your program, your plans, your technical guidelines. So another thing we did and this is also very important, is understand what is the threat. Because I've heard so many times, and today in the video and the beginning, harvest now the crib later, harvest now the crib later, it is much more than that. And maybe harvest now the crib later is not your issue. And we believe it is not our issue, for instance. So the threat comes in three flavors. 
threat to confidentiality, a threat to authentication, and a threat to legal history. Confidentiality, we've already talked a lot about that. About authentication, it is not only to authenticate persons, but you are also authenticating your supply chain. When you install a, a software package, you are accepting it as valid because you are validating the signature from the vendor, from, for instance, from Microsoft. So an issue in the, in the signatures is a threat to your supply chain. But also on the legal history side, a threat to the signatures means that if you are signing contracts digitally, when you sign a contract, you hand one piece to the, to the other signing party. They do not need to harvest anything. They have the contract, they have the signature, they have your public key. If they can calculate from the public key the private key, they will be able to generate fake manipulated contracts. And if you want to invalidate them, you will need to invalidate every single contract that you have ever created. So there is a big impact to all your signatures from a legal perspective. And you also need to take care about that. So with this, <coughs> and this is just a sample, you take down all those high-level threats and narrow them down to different use cases. And with these different use cases, uh, you kind of make your, your risk analysis. We did the, our risk analysis with regards to how long it does that use case need to remain secure? How available is going to be an attack for, from a third party? Or how, how available is that data going to be available to an external party? And what is the impact if, that use, if, if the risk to that use case materializes? So if you combine, in this case, um, it's a multiplication. If you combine all these three factors, you come out, for instance, we came out that, and, and I've discussed this with other people in the banking sector, and they agree. Harvest Now Decriptulator for us is not an issue. Harvest Now Decriptulator for us is probably um, a reputational issue. So what worries me most? That 20 years from now, somebody says that the account state of some of our cast of one of my customers today was whatever, or that the digital signatures in my contracts, all my digital contracts, can be invalidated. So, from a reputational point of view, her, uh, Harvest Now Decriptulator is important. From an operational point of view, I'm impacted by the signatures. And signatures do not need to be harvested. So in, in the next step, we are thinking about adding here an, an additional column where it states um, how self-sufficient we are with regards to making something about, about the, each use case. So including that column will tell us not only what's the risk, but which, which use cases we can start working on. If we are self-sufficient and we do not depend on any vendors, we can start today. Um, another very important thing is you're not going to be doing this alone. So you can engage your people in your organization. That's part of awareness, but engaging people, not only Senior leaders, you're going to be help from, from people everywhere. Here in the audience, there's Ravi, uh, who, um, who stepped up to lead our internal post-quantum PKI work group. And why he did it? Because he wanted. Nobody asked him to do this. So we built two internal communities. The quantum technologies community, this is a public community where we inform, keep up to date, and we have open discussions about anything quantum. And we created a private community, the cryptography practitioners community, where we have everybody working or knowledgeable about cryptography in Santander so that we know where they are. And we can talk to them, and we can send them messages, and they can make questions. Knowing who they are throughout the group, is going to be 
invaluable in the future, in the forthcoming years, because we're going to need them to help us. We're going to need them to spread the word, and we're going to need them to, to put their hands and to assess the different works and provide their opinions and maybe lead the effort in their different countries. So maybe they are doing something completely different from this today, but you need to know who can help you in the future. And, and so as of today, we've created a number of different work groups. Uh, obviously, we got a work group about discovery, which is not only about new tools, but also how you can leverage the intelligence that you already have about your, 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 your state. For instance, surely many companies have vulnerability assessment uh, tools. Maybe you can leverage that. So there's a lot of things that you can do already. I'll come back, that, that into that I'll, I'll come back into that later. I'll talk about the cryptography standard in a while. We created the post-quantum post public cloud workgroup where we try to leverage the existing control framework that we have for public clouds because probably we're not going to do mu anything much different from what we're already doing in public cloud. Basically, we will need to incorporate more controls as the public cloud vendors provide features. And we just need to make sure that we are implementing those features. Um, Post-quantum sig uh, signatures, quantum safe communications, post-quantum Swift. I think post-quantum Swift is, is going to be, for us, a small closed loop environment where we can test uh, all the interactions, all the use cases of cryptography in, 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 in a known environment, make lessons learned to maybe later on go to other en environments and, 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 and apply what, whatever we learned in, 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 that, in, that, uh, in that place. So <coughs> standards, cryptography standards have traditionally been made or any standard has traditionally been made as part of a word document. Crypto agility begins with agility, or <laughs> with, agil with agile standards. So our, crypto our new cryptography standard is not built as a word document. It is built on GitHub. So we are building it with issues, with pull requests, with a collaborative effort from many people. And if somebody says something that they don't like, they can open an issue, they can open a pull request, or they can see all the track of discussions that we've had to arrive to a certain agreement that is written down there. But further than that, we are also going to incorporate here configurations. So for instance, imagine, is as of today, you are asked to make your company replace the cryptography that is configured in SSH in all your state, imagine that you have millions of virtual machines in your state. How are you going to do that? Complex stuff. But if those lines are specified in this repository and all those machines have a pipeline to pull from that repository, you change the definition of cryptography for SSH in this repository and with some controls, semi-automatically, semi all your state will reconfigure. And maybe that, that can take, instead of years, and lots of effort and a specific project, it can be BAU. And obviously, we are also doing a work like, like what Thomas has been presented. We are monitoring the performance and the impact that the different algorithms may have in our state. So um, when I see at this report from KPMG and BSI, if to different organizations and the level of the organizations asked in, in this survey, they are, they are great, good, big enterprises. So why are they not doing anything? Because there are no standards. My friend David Domingo from Indra says this is crypto procrastination. We did all that, and we believe everybody should make the same journey 
and there are no standards. You don't need standards to get it to work. So, so forget about the standards. There are so many things you need to do before <laughs> standards are out, you're already late. Yeah, but reality is this. Here we're all concerned about this, but yeah, there's a lot of people that is concerned and they cannot engage their organization. And in, in fact, we are talking about a threat that is going to materialize the next decade where many people is gonna be retired, but they are short of budgeting today. So uh, how are they gonna push the, the organization? So I'll, I want to provide some, some hints on what we found useful. Yeah, obviously, if you look at the priorities for enterprise tissue in 2023, don't look for quantum, don't look for crypto. It does not show there, it is not there. So what you need to do is raise your voice and maybe I, I want to discuss with you some of the messages that, 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 that might be useful in this. Obviously, we, we all talk about that cryptography is expected to be broken by source algorithm with quantum computers somewhere in the next decade. Um, and we all know about Michele Mosca's theorem um, but despite that, in this same survey, you see that what is the maximum duration for which information must be kept confidential in your organization over five years, 82%. When does your organization plan to be in transitioning? Not applicable, 32%. Maybe they, don't, they believe they do not use cryptography. So, and consciousness is also a very important risk because whether you, you know it or not, you are using cryptography. Um, so 18%, five years plus. How long do you think it will take your organization to realize quantum resilience? 54%. So in summary, quantum safety will not be achieved in time by, by any of the survey participants they are already late. And they're not starting because, because, because there are no standards. It is Dustin's fault. <laughs> so this is a document from the Netherlands National Communications Agency from Anita and Germain we saw today. Uh, identifies urgent adopters. So if you are an organization with, which manages um, sensitive data, if you are a critical infrastructure provider, or if you are a provider of long-lived infrastructure, you should be more serious about this and, and, and start working. You should have started working about this a long time ago. Um, and, and well, when you see what would encourage your organization to make decisions? Yeah, existence of, of standards, again, Dustin's fault. But once, once we know that Dustin is, 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 is we, we can blame him for everything, the other one is regulatory requirements. In the end, everybody is going to act if, if they are required to act. So my, my, the um, conclusion is that risk-based messages do not work. They have not worked so far and they will not work because we are talking about a threat that happens far in the future. So we need to explain in a different way why things need to be done now. So this example I won't enter into details because Bill explained this very well, but the fact that probably the most in informed government in the world about this is asking everybody to, hey, in six months, you need to give me an inventory of all your vulnerable systems, and in seven months, you need to provide me a budget. You know, it, 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 it translates a sense of urgency. Don't you think so? But most importantly, the timeline that the US government has established 
to migrate it themselves says that it is not it is not about having transitioned your cryptography in, in by the, the end by, by mid 30s it is that in 2025 us agencies need to start using post quantum cryptography by default for software and framework signing and for web browsers and cloud services almost anything in 2025 the standards are not going to be out until 2024 this timeline is like crazy and if they need to meet this standard they're going to ask their providers to meet it and if they can regulate their providers they will do so this request is going to come down on you and surely nobody will be able to meet this this timeline but one thing is not meeting it another thing is not trying so um, remember u.s agencies are required to use post quantum cryptography by default somewhere between 2025 and 2027 very tight timeline and your industry may be may may may, ha may be a follow-up of this of this requirement so going back to la the latest document from the world economic forum um, their advice is work on awareness and engagement what in cryptography management and again uh, collaborate it is very important that we all collaborate in this your company is not going to transition to quantum safe cryptography if your peers do not transition to quantum safe cryptography and thank you very much Uh, well, um, I, I don't know about you, but I think LinkedIn got it wrong. Taylor Swift couldn't have done that. Um, so thank you, hey mate. In today's complex, fast-paced world, you need a partner who can help secure your digital transformation so you can drive your business forward confidently. Someone who can fine-tune and integrate the secure technologies that enable mobile identities, digital payments, and a hybrid workforce. You need a partner who will have your back so you can stay focused on the road ahead and accelerate your organization's growth. Entrust, securing a world in motion.